Hello, welcome back to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel and I am homeschooling three boys. The base of our education is the Robinson curriculum. Today I'm going to kick off my series on our math sequence. And so we will be talking about the advocate. So the first resource I use after I have taught them um, their numbers, which I start, you know, pretty young flashcards, like one to 30 or so. And I have a memory game that's in my TPT store. If you want to grab that, it's a good way to build up their number recognition. Them how to count on the abacus right there with that memory game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's good for their fine motor skills too. So they're practicing counting. They could be practicing their um, figure recognition and, you know, getting familiar with saying the words when they, you know, one, when they see this. And um, it's just an all around good practice. So that's usually the first thing I start them on and then we move on to a little bit uh, more complex abacus use. This is where we start. So these are the little sets of abacus flashcards that I created. They're in my TPT store. They're pretty cheap and I just print them out on cardstock. Although there are ones I was like at a cardstock and I just printed them on normal paper. And honestly, they work. That They work pretty well. Um, they're just a little bit more durable if they're on, you know, cardstock. And I want things to last through several kids. But if you have the print file, you can just reprint them. It's not a big deal. Anyways, so we're going to start with our first abacus lesson, which is called Numbers and Place Value. So on the back side, looks like this. And you can see I have just listed out the place values, you know, ones, tens, one hundreds. So they're not going to have to know, you know, all of it up to a million right away. I would just focus on the ones and the tens to begin with, because that's probably the counting range that you're working in at that time. And then of course it comes with a number of examples on an abacus. So I'm showing them 10 ones is equal to 110. So that's helpful for them to have. And I like them to have these sets of flashcards because it gives me something I can give them their set of flashcards to work on. And I did the answers in the form of uh, the actual abacus, how it would look if they got the right answer, what it should look like. So they could check that. So I'll show you on here. And I am not like, I actually have a smaller one and I actually wrote the place values like ones, tens, one hundreds on it at the beginning, just to get my kids like familiar. It looks like this. Although since I think I'm a mere image of you. So to start, it should actually look like this to you, right? The beads should all be lined up on the left side of your abacus to begin. This would mean zero, right? So then this, there are 10 beads, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, on each line. So 10 ones, 10 tens, 10 one hundreds, so forth and so on. So I would first just start by having my kid count the beads, you know, as high as they can count. I might take a, a die and roll it and have them count, you know, like to six and then they can count off you know, six, so they can see what that looks like, right? Then clear it. And um, so once they can count, you know, up to 10, you can teach them how to regroup. So you can teach them 10 of these is equal to one of these. So whenever your ones look like this, the word is regroup. So you move over 110, move back the ones. And that is the number 10. 
right? So they know how to regroup to the tens, ones and tens. So then I would start by giving them the flashcard work, like one. And they know, they say, okay, what, it, what should one look like on my abacus? One, right? And we always start from the bottom up. And then they can see the answer here, one. Then, you know, I'll try like 11. That's the next one, 11. Say, what should that answer look like? So they should know, well, 11, you don't want to, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? That's what, regroup, eleven, ten, and one. And, you know, as they get more adept at it, they, they know eleven just is a ten and a one. Ten plus one is eleven, right? So I have them have a bunch of numbers. I have them go through in the list and the numbers keep getting higher, you know, like they'll get up to like 800. What should that look like? Then more complex, 637. What should that look like? You know, 25,000. So you can have them just like keep working through the numbers until, um, you know, you can even just have them start one, two. You can have them just go through the numbers on the abacus. And then this is a good thing to have them practice to check their knowledge, like their knowledge that they really get it because they're not in sequential order necessarily. So I get like really high. Look at this one. <laughs> We've got 1,234,567,890. What does that look like? It looks like this. Kind of fun, huh? Okay, so that's the first lesson is just getting them familiar with how to just put numbers on the abacus because that's what they'll have to do when they are um, doing any type of subtraction or addition. You're going to start, you know, multiplication, you're going to start by just putting a number on the abacus. So they need to be proficient and make sure they're not putting the wrong number on the abacus or they'll get the wrong answer. And this teaches people to be diligent and careful and meticulous with their work, which we want to set that habit right away. And also, once it's set, what they think it is, you know, remind them just double check, go back and look, is that right? Okay, so let's say they are able, they understand, you know, and you can always come back to these, you can do the lower place values first, you can just do like ones and tens and then maybe one tens and then you know move on to the addition within the two digit addition then you could move on to like add a hundreds you could kind of keep moving on in these flashcard sets you know they go up higher and higher so you can mix them up how you want how you think is appropriate for their learning um i just started by having them go all the way through this pack to learn how to put numbers on i had them go all the way up to the millions just because it kept them regrouping higher and higher groups, you know, so 10 tens, that's 100, you put 100 beat over and slide your 10 tens back over. So the next one is one digit addition pack looks like this. And it just walks them through. Oh, it shows them single digit addition within 10. So I have some examples here, start with nothing. And then you put on your six. And then when you add your three more, the answer is going to be down, look like nine. It's going to look like this. So I walked them through, or they have um, different ones to solve, you know, and what they should look like. And these ones stay pretty small, like with the single digits numbers being added together. And... You can, I would, like, I always like to teach things on the advocates before I started doing the flashcard. That's how I structured that. So, uh, so advocates practice, once they've mastered that, then I would give them the flashcards, right? Are doing the right pile, wrong pile with their flashcards. They can hold off their wrong pile and then they can solve it on the advocates start getting more and more familiar. I really liked it with automatically knowing like that this is 10. So 
if I see two over here, this is eight. And I, they don't have to keep like counting it all the time. They, they start, this starts being automatic. If you see four, you know this is automatically, you know this is six on the other side. Okay, so so far we've covered place values and putting your beginning number on your abacus. And then you've done, you've introduced this concept of single digit addition. So let's just do a couple random single digit addition problems on here so they can see how it's done, okay? So if we said seven plus three, I'd start by putting on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I add three more, one, two, three. That gave me 10. So you can stop there, but I would just teach them to go ahead and trade it out, regroup for a 10, put it back. And the answer to seven plus three is 10, right? Okay, and they can go it out. Okay, let's do six plus six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what I'm starting with, add six more. One, two, three, four, I need to regroup. five, six. This is the answer. And it is 10, 11, 12, 12. Okay, let's try um, five plus nine. One, two, three, four, five goes on first. Now we're going to add our nine. One, two, three, four, five, regroup. Six, seven, eight, nine. So I have 10, and I count my ones, 11, 12, 13, 14. Nine plus five is 14. Okay, let's just do one more. Let's say I had nine plus nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plus nine, I start here. One, regroup. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so. I hope that helped you see how to do the one digit addition and um, next we will move on to two digit addition.